In Lesson 1.1, you can show students some common objects to begin to get them to understand the meaning of the term characteristic or property. Students can describe objects in terms of size, color, shape, texture, until they begin to understand that these things are the properties of an object. Eventually, students will see that objects can be grouped in different ways depending on the characteristics used to group them. After talking to students about the different properties or characteristics of objects and how to group them, you can show a simulation to get them to understand how different objects can be grouped in different ways. Let's take a look. In this simulation, students can suggest ways of grouping objects according to size, shape, or color. Let's see how it works. You can have a discussion with students about how they would like to group the objects. They have a choice of whether they want to group them according to shape, whether they're a circle, a triangle, or square, size, whether they're small, medium, or large, or color, whether they're red, green, or blue. Depending on which one they choose, you can go in that direction. Let's just say they start with size. So if you click on any object, let's say the large green square in the bottom left, everything will be grouped according to size. All the large objects will be grouped. Then, if you decide to group the medium size objects, you would just click on one of the medium objects. Let's say the center medium size red triangle and everything medium size will be grouped, no matter what the color or shape. And if they decide on small, you could click on the small blue circle in the upper right and all the small objects are grouped, regardless of their color or shape. And they can do this for each characteristic. Let's just do one more. Let's do by shape. If you notice at the bottom here, there's size, shape, and color. You can click on shape. And now, if I click on the left side in the middle, the blue square, everything that's a square will be grouped, no matter what the size or color is. If I click on the middle red triangle, all the triangles will be grouped. So this way, you can help kids understand that depending on the characteristic they look at, that will determine what the grouping is like. So then you can hold up three objects. We suggested a coin, a round plastic lid, and a metal key, and have kids suggest ways of grouping them. For instance, they could group them according to shape. So the metal coin and the plastic lid would be together, but the metal key, even though it's made of metal like the coin, would not be grouped with them. It would be grouped by itself because it has an irregular shape because you're grouping according to shape. Or you could group according to flexibility. And the plastic lid would be by itself because it's flexible, but the coin and the key would be together because they're stiff. Then you could actually give students a set of materials and decide how they want to group them. They could group them according to the material they're made out of, or whether they're flexible or stiff, or their shape, whether they're long and skinny, or flat, or irregular shape. In this case, we're showing that they're being grouped according to what they're made from. So it's a plastic ruler, ends up being grouped with a plastic spoon, and a wooden pencil with a wooden popsicle stick, There's also a, a piece of plastic like sheeting underneath the plastic spoon and the ruler, which is hard to see. Now they've grouped the rubber band and the eraser together, the aluminum foil and the metal paper clip, and anything made out of wax, wax paper, a crayon and a candle, and paper, construction paper and copier paper. In the extend part of the lesson, you can show students pictures of animals and ask them how they could be grouped. So students could suggest grouping them according to the type of animal. All the dogs would be in one group, the cats in another, the cows in another. They could do it according to color. All the animals that are black would be together, whether it's a dog, a cat, or a cow. The brown ones together and the black and white ones together. Uh, they could do it according to what animals live at home and what animals live on the farm. There, the dogs and the cats would be in one group, and the cows would be in another. So students get the idea that depending on what characteristic you're looking at, you can group objects in different ways. For the NGSS, Standard 2 PS1-1, 
plan and conduct an investigation to describe and classify different kinds of materials by their observable properties, well, that's what students are doing throughout this investigation. They're looking at objects, observing their characteristics, and grouping them according to the characteristic that they choose. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, students do a simple investigation here to take different objects, look at their properties, and group them accordingly. Students will see that depending on the property they choose, they can group the objects in different ways. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, Matter can be described and classified by its observable properties. That's exactly what students are doing here. They're basically classifying or grouping objects based on their observable properties. And for cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportion, and quantity, this idea that patterns in the natural and human design world can be observed. Here, the pattern would be that the observable properties of objects can be used to classify them into groups. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.